it is nearly Valentine's Day and February is kind of the month of love and I hope that if there is someone or several special people in your life you are looking forward to celebrating the awesome things that your relationships bring together. I've been obviously preparing for Valentine's Day to celebrate with my wife but I've also been thinking about how much how useful my Ford F-150 Lightning is. I think it's fair to say that as a family, we really love owning a Deer Atoll. As I mentioned in a video earlier this week, while Deer Atoll is huge and we don't try and use it for short trips, we try and take a smaller vehicle when it's more appropriate, this truck has been really useful. It's helped us take the crew and all of our equipment to events. It has helped us make long distance trips in relative ease, sometimes towing a car or a trailer behind the truck. And it also helps my wife get wood to and from the shop and has helped us get some woodworking equipment home. But it's also helped us have power when the power's gone out. And we live up here in a fairly rural location, as regulars who watch the channel will know. And that means that our power tends to go out quite a lot because if I turn around here, there are lots of power cables. They crisscross down the valley and I think it was Boxing Day, so December 26th, we had no power because a good half mile of power lines were blown down when a tree came down. And so Adira Tal, our F-150 Lightning Lariat, was able to provide power and we did that from the bed using the outlets in the bed of the truck and running the truck in pro power um, mode. It's a mode you have to have the truck on to use so there are some questions as to how safe that is, you know, just leaving your truck powered on. But obviously here in this rural location, it's less of a, a challenge. But one of the things we wanted to do when we bought this truck was to have automatic power backup. We wanted to have the, the truck automatically come on and provide power to the house in a power cut so that we could continue to use our heat pumps to either heat or cool our home so that we would still have power to run the business and to run the channel so that we would be able to cook not necessarily using our stove but using like a microwave or a, a portable induction hob something like that and that we were able to get water out of the ground because we have a well here we're off grid when it comes to water the only thing that's actually connected to an infrastructure here is is the power everything else comes either on site like the water in the sewerage or through the air as our, our satellite internet connection and our local wi-fi beamed down the valley so we opted to purchase with our own money the ford home integration system now i say it's ford's home integration system because ford's home integration system while it's sold as part of the F-150 Lightning. You know, if you, it's the truck that can back your home up and, and run your home if you buy the home integration system. It's not actually made by Ford. So the charging station here, this Charge Station Pro, is made by Bosch, a German company. I was one of the early F-150 Lightning customers, so I got this, this, this charging station free of charge. And the charging station itself is different to most home charging stations because it has it looks like a dc charging connector in it it's not it's a standard charging station a standard charging station capable of charging it up to 80 amps it's about 20 kilowatts but it also is capable of pulling power out of the truck and feeding it to the home integration system which as i noted earlier is not made by ford it is made by a company called delta and it consists of this box this battery and this inverter. If you've watched Tom Malogny's channel, he has done a really fantastic review about how his system works perfectly. Tom has a much bigger house. He has a complicated power setup for his home. He's got, uh, he's actually got two different power feeds coming into his home because he's upgraded his service, I think, to 400 amp. While we have 400 amp capability here, we've only got a 200 amp service wired in. We'd have to pay the electricity company extra to have that other service added. But we were pretty confident when we got the truck that we wanted this because everything in our house is powered by electricity. We don't have a wood burning stove. We have no oil. 
there's no natural gas here or anything like that. Everything is 100% electric. When we bought the house, it was a resistive heater setup. So we had cadet heaters all through the house. They're still there. They're just not wired up anymore. And last summer, we installed a heat pump, one for the, for the server room for Transport Evolved and one for the rest of the house. And when we had those installed, we were very careful to make sure that they were specified so that they could run off this system in the event of a power cut. Now, this system arrived in October. And if you watch Take Two, you'll know that I've kind of mentioned about this multiple times and done a few videos about how the system was kind of sort of working. Today, I'm here to say the system is technically finally installed, but it's far from what we wanted it to be. I'm gonna explain. First off, I want to just acknowledge this. This is a span panel. It's a smart power system or smart electrical distribution panel, smart, um, smart breaker basically. And this was provided to us by span for the purposes of review. And I have paid a local electrician a sizable amount of money to install this. Now, the cool thing about the span panel is it's internet connected and it monitors all of the circuits in the panel. And if there is a circuit that is pulling too much current, it will alert you. There might be a problem with the device. If there is a problem and you have a power cut and you have this connected to a Tesla power wall, the span system will talk to the Tesla power wall and automatically turn off non-essential breakers and leave you with just the essential loads so that you can use it like that. Now, if you want to see one of these in action, uh, there are some great YouTube videos already online about the span panel. I don't want to do a review of the span panel today because it's literally still being commissioned. I'm waiting for the email so I can set up the smart app. But when we first had the Ford home integration system installed, as I said, the, most of that system is made by a company called Delta and the system is sold by Sunrun, who are fairly well known in the US as being a solar panel installation company, among others. As Ford's partner for the home integration system, Sunrun will come to your home and install the Ford home integration system and get it working with your truck. At the time we got this system, Ford didn't have, or rather Sunrun, sorry, uh, Sunrun didn't have an official installer in the state of Oregon, nor did it have official approval because of state regulations to come to my house and install it. So because we were getting this installed and Span had a, an installation partner locally here in Oregon, I mentioned to that electric electrician, hey, would you guys like to work with Sunrun on this? Would you like to install it? And they said yes. They attended all of the meetings with, um, with Sunrun that they were asked to. Sunrun sent out an engineer, came to the house. They looked at all of the calculations, all of the loads. They took loads of meter readings. They looked at our panel. They took lots of photographs. They took photographs of our AC units or our heat pumps out back. They took photographs of the pump out at the pump house. And then Sunrun came up with technical drawings and got all of the permits, um, set up or the pre-permit process. I think our local electrician actually filed the permits. They planned the system. So Sunrun planned the system. And while I was driving back from fully charged live, so back in September, I actually had a meeting while I was on the road with um, the guys at Sunrun and they said, yep, everything's everything's good. We've got everything set up. We know what we're going to do. Um, we're going to get your local electricians on board, make sure they're properly certified. They know how the system works. And because it's the first one that we've done in Oregon, we're going to fly out an engineer to your house and the engineer will help your local electrician, make sure that everything is wired in properly and then you'll be good to go. So fast forward to the middle of October when we were going to have this, this system installed. And Michael and I were away. We were off filming um, in, um, in LA that day. It was when we were going and filming with uh, Sono, the Sono Sion. And so this was installed when I wasn't at the house, but that was okay because we had the local electrician who really knows his stuff, really nice guy. Um, and also 
uh, a representative from Sunrun who was here and talked him through the process, made sure that everything was done according to Sunrun specifications. Then the problem started happening because the truck, this is the charging station, right? The truck did not want to talk to the Ford Charge Station Pro and nothing was automatically working. And so they managed, it was intermittent, it was intermittently working and we managed to get the truck to power the home integration system. It came on. But as soon as it came on, there were issues with the relays and the relays started to chatter. Uh, I'm not going to open this because I have to have two hands really. To, oh, yeah, there you go. I can open it. So how this works is there are regular breakers here and then behind that there are a set of electromechanical relays that open and close. And they will open, i.e. breaking the circuit, if this box detects any issues like a strange voltage variance or anything like that. And because of the way that the home integration systems inverter works, the way it was designed by Delta, the system kind of has more voltage variance in it than the span panel was willing to accept. And it was causing the span panel to glitch on and off, glitch on and off. So we then spent the next month or so trying to diagnose the fault. And then it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> and the electrician came back on Thanksgiving. We tried putting the stove on the span panel. On low loads, the span panel worked perfectly. So we could have a couple of 110 volt circuits and it was fine. As soon as we put any heavy loads on there, it started to glitch the panel out. So Sunrun said, we think it's the span panel. We'd like you to remove that from your system. Now we'd already paid for the uh, span panel or we'd agreed to pay for the span panel we've only just actually paid for it we'd agreed for the span panel to be put in we didn't really want to remove it so instead we've been working with our electricians and with span and with sunrun and agreed that what we would do would be that the span panel would not be backed up by the home integration system and so in the span panel right now uh, all of the things that are not backed up when the power goes out so none of the electric car charging stations will work when the power goes out, obviously except this one, but it's not charging. It's pulling power out of the truck and feeding it to the house. That's the idea. Uh, the stove, we decided we didn't want the stove to be backed up because if there's a power cut, we have a, a small toaster oven. There's only two of us and we have inductive hobs that we use on the road. So we can make beans on toast and, and that's fine. We've got the microwave. We also decided to not put the dryer the, the clothes dryer on there because clothes dryers use a lot of, of electricity and by the way if you're wondering why we don't dry our clothes outside on a, on a clothesline here we have trees very tall trees there's a lot of sap that ends up on on the ground that would make clothes all dirty again and we live somewhere where stink bugs are a big thing and uh, if you watch Linus Tech Tips you'll see that they sometimes have stink bug problems we have stink bug problems all the time in fact there's a couple uh, up here in the corner. Uh, by the way, I'm also making this a one take video because I want it to be as authentic as possible. I'm also being, I'm also being very careful about the words I'm choosing to explain the situation thus far because this has not been resolved yet <laughs> and lots of people have been asking. So this is where we're at. So fast forward to yesterday when our wonderful, amazing electrician, I'm not going to use his name, but he is wonderful. I don't want that electrician to, to have to get dragged into this. They are brilliant. They are wonderful. I love them to bits. I get on really well with the electrician who was working here. He came out. He'd done everything according to Sunrun's original design, but Sunrun had asked, basically, Sunrun had said, hey, if you keep the span panel on there, we're not going to work on, on trying to fix your problems. So we removed the span panel completely. And what we did was this panel in the garage and the light may change slightly. This panel in the garage was originally going to be our non-essential loads, the stuff that wasn't going to be backed up. And the span panel was going to be our essential loads panel. However, while Sunrun and Span say eventually at some point in the future, they want to work together and make sure that the Ford home integration system and the span panel work together. For now, Sunrun is focusing on just getting them installed. So 
what we decided to do was make the span panel the non-essential loads. So when the power goes out, that just turns off. We can't use it in backup or anything. It just turns off. And that's fine for now. And we'd make the breaker that I just showed you inside the garage, the breaker box there would be our essential load panel. So it's got all of the things on it that will run the house in the event of a power cut or a power outage. It's taken our electrician two days to do the work. They had to put some extra uh, cabling in, new to route the cables. They put in some new conduit. We've kept the old conduit in place because at some point in the future, the hope is that we'll be able to switch it back around so that the span panel will be backed up by the home integration system and everything else. But after all of the panel was set up and everything was where it was supposed to be, we went to power it on. And here's where we hit the roadblock. Now, according to Sunrun, everything is working as of whatever the time it is today. Uh, I'm posting this a day after filming it. So to subtract a day from the post date of this video and you'll, you'll see what I, I mean. I've also just, I've reached out to Ford's press department, even though this is not a Ford problem. And I should reiterate the Ford F-150 Lightning has been brilliant. I love it. It's a huge behemoth of a vehicle, but for what we need, it's a great vehicle. And it has provided our house with backup power using just long, appropriately rated extension cables running power to the back of the truck. I mean, when it was well below freezing, that's how we kept warm with little uh, bar heaters keeping us warm. But when we, try, when we tried to run the test earlier today, this turned on and the truck said, hey, we're gonna provide power. And then nothing happened. And the truck said there was an issue with the charging station, communicating with the charging station. So we tried again, same issue. Now, over the Christmas break, I did have a conference call, quite a long one, with the folks at Sunrun. And we did try and do some troubleshooting because I'd said, hey, it's not regularly reliably connecting between the truck and the charging station. And I was told one of the issues might be that the truck is too far away from the charging station. I'm just gonna show you. So this is the charging station. I'm gonna touch it with, with my, my finger here and I'm going to knee the bumper of my truck. So it's not very far away, but as it happens, the communications module that this station communicates with is in the back of the cab, not the front. And it's the furthest seat away from behind the, the furthest seat away from where this charging station is. So that might be a, an issue. It doesn't not only need to have a physical connection, but it needs to have a Bluetooth LE or whatever that connection is between here and the truck. And if that fails, the truck just stops providing power. We have probably about, oh, I can't remember now how many circuits, but we've got a substantial number of circuits in the breaker in, in breaker box in, in the garage. And they're mainly all 110 volt circuits with the exception of a 240 volt supply that goes up to the server room, which is actually two independent single phase circuits. So it's just a two phase connection up there, but then it's got its own sub panel up there and they're just 120 volt outlets. We have the 240 volt supply that goes out the back to the two heat pumps. In fact, there's two separate lines that Kate Warren Elliott and I put in uh, last summer. We put those in together. And then there is another supply that goes to our well house. Now, when our water pump, we have two water pumps, one to pump the water out of the ground and one to pump the water from a reservoir just below the surface to the house. When that second pump failed in January and we had no water, we ended up opting to get what they call a constant pressure pump, which is a three phase variable flow pump that is easier on systems like this. this. It's what they call a soft start system. So it doesn't have a, a high inrush current, the amount of electricity that instantaneously travels down when you start a motor spinning. I didn't explain that very well, but for the purposes of this video, that's where I'm gonna be. That system should have lessened the load on 
the Ford home integration system. All good, all good so far. The third attempt we made today to try and get the truck to work with this was successful. The system communicated, the truck said it was providing power, this home integration system clicked, all the relays clicked and everything came on. It ran for maybe 40 seconds. We saw the load go two, three kilowatts, four kilowatts, four and a half kilowatts, and then it died. So at this point, the suggestion was that maybe we should turn off the well pump, turn off the air conditioning and all these other systems and try and figure out what was going on. Our electrician had to leave for another job. He had properly and carefully installed the system. It's all ready to be inspected. So um, there was no need for him to hang around. And so I ended up calling uh, one of the engineers at Sunrun that I've been working with. Just before the electrician left, he and our electrician had a little bit of a chat and the Sunrun engineer said the system's working fine. And our electrician and I were, were telling the engineer no, because as soon as you put anything more than 110 volt outlets on it, it does bad things. And the engineer has suggested that there is a problem with the loads in our house, the 240 volt loads. I find that incredibly hard to believe, not only because there are three separate circuits that should work, but Sunrun also spec'd the system to work with those. And so if there was going to be a problem, one would hope they would have said at that point, hey, this is not going to work. I'm sorry, it's not possible. Now, we were told, hey, your well pump may cause you a problem. Everything else will be fine. But even with the well pump turned off, even with all the other high loads turned off, I turned on one circuit in addition to all of the 110 volt circuits, which were pulling about two to three kilowatts. And we ended up with a situation where the heat pump for the server closet, which is on a 15 amp breaker, tiny little thing, not very powerful at all, came on, ran for maybe 40 seconds or so, and then the system turned off again, the, the Ford system turned off. Now, our argument here is that the system is not being reliable. It's not reliably activating or turning on. I know that over the holidays when we had power go out, we still had like a couple of circuits attached to this system and it worked kind of sort of, but it didn't automatically activate, which tells you that there's an issue there. Sunrun at the time were blaming Span. Sunrun are now saying it's your well pump, it's your air compressor, not your air compressor, your heat pumps. Um, it's all of these other systems and have stated that, at least in the engineer that we were dealing with, said that it's operating as intended. And that leaves us feeling very frustrated because right now I cannot recommend this system. I don't know what the outcome of that would be. I assume that we're, we're going to be asked to pay the full amount for this because it's now been fully installed, but it doesn't work properly. And right now, if you have a Ford F-150 Lightning and you're considering this system, I would say hold off because it's not working as intended, at least not for me. As I say, I feel that had the system been specced at the offset and we knew that we couldn't run any high current loads at all and they looked at the air com uh, the heat pumps at out back and gone they won't work and looked at the well and gone they won't work we'd be okay they looked at them and said they should work the well may not work we can try it and see what happens but the heat pumps should be fine and i was okay with that but now now i'm not so sure because none of the high current circuits that are in this box here are wanting to play ball. And it feels like we've just spent, or are just about to spend, a large amount of money on a system that doesn't actually provide us with any backup power, will not give us any well water, will not run any kind of, of heating when we have a power cut. And frankly, this truck is capable of providing 10 kilowatts of power just as is from the outlets in the bed. So, like I say, I'm being very careful about the words I'm picking here because I don't know what the ultimate outcome of this will be. But I want to give you an update because I know lots of you have been asking us about this. And at the end of the day, I feel that 
this is an important thing to discuss. You know, we, we've invested our own time and money into getting this system installed. Uh, there was a potential identified problem with it. We worked with our local electricians. They came back, worked on the house for two days to remove what Sunrun had said was causing the problem. And there are still problems. Now we're being told by at least one of the engineers at Sunrun that everything checks out, everything's fine. There's obviously something wrong with your side and that's nothing to do with us. And that's frustrating to say the least. Now, I know it must be frustrating for you watching this because I know many people will say, well, it's Ford's problem. And I don't know if there's software in the Ford uh, F-150 that's causing problems. Maybe it's something to do with the software. I, I would hate to cast allegations in any party's direction right now. And I don't want to turn around and say uh, Sunrunner to blame or Ford are to blame or our electricians were to blame or Span is to blame. I don't believe any one company is culpable at the moment. I just want to make sure that we figure out what the problem is. I am getting ticked off. I don't mind admitting that because like I say, we've been waiting since October to try and get this system running. And while I love the truck and the truck has been super reliable and done pretty much everything I want it to do, this system has not. The only thing that the Ford Charge Station Pro has done is charge the truck and it's done that reliably. Beyond that though, it's been a, it's been a real gamble. And so therefore, as I say, right now, I can't recommend this system. You're better off with an old fashioned generator hookup and cables. I know a lot of people watching this are also gonna say, well, I could have told you that from the outset. Yes, you could have. But part of, the, part of the challenge of owning a new cutting edge vehicle is that you are gonna get cut sometimes, you are gonna bleed. And so we took that on cognizant, knowing that there might be teething problems, knowing there might be issues, and we've run into them right now. So there you have it. That's our update. It's not the video that I wanted to make. Uh, we have a, a, a Trello board that we go through as a team every week and we talk about all of the videos that we're going to be making. Sometimes we plan them weeks in advance. Sometimes we plan them like a day in advance, depending on, on the news cycle. And this was a video that we had wanted to make for a really long time. And we knew that the electricians were coming, the electricians, and we were hopeful that maybe this would all be working and I'd be able to talk about it and tell you my initial thoughts. I guess these are my initial thoughts. They're just not the initial thoughts that I wanted to have. And if you have an F-150 Lightning and you have this system and it works, please tell me in the comments. Make sure that you discuss this in the comments on Discord. Just because I've had a problem doesn't mean that I think this system is completely terrible and no one should buy it. But based on my own experience, I can't recommend you go and buy it right now unless I see evidence that other people are not having the same issue that I have had. And so far, Tom Malogny is the only person I know of who's got a system that is really reliable and, and working perfectly. So if you are one of those lucky people who has a system that works and is functional, tell everybody about it in the comments below and go to our Discord server and, and join in there as well. Because I know that people come to this channel for for information and our opinion and reviews. But at the end of the day, a review is only as good as the subjective opinion of the person making it. So if I have a bad time reviewing a, a product or a service, it is going to impact how I rate that, that service and that video. And I've held off making a video chronicling this thus far because I wanted to give everybody as much of a chance as possible to try and come to a solution. But today, after speaking to the engineer, after feeling like we're a little stuck, I don't know, there's not a lot else we can do. I've been told they're gonna check the logs to see if there's any hardware faults with the system. I personally think there's a hardware fault either with this or the inverter, and hopefully they'll figure that out and replace it if that is the case. But if it's not the case, and Sunrun's engineer is proven right that it's working exactly as designed, then there's definitely uh, an advertising or a messaging problem because that's not how this system is being advertised and that is a big big problem for Ford and Sunrun and everyone else involved. I should also point out Span has nothing to do with the problems here um, because Span is completely separate they just had to have had to happen 
to have their system come at the same time as this. So we had both installed together. In hindsight, that was a stupid decision on my part. But hey, you live and you learn. That is it for today's video. If you liked it, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts as is our Discord chat room, link is below. If you want more, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links below to our Kofi, Bitcoin and Swag store and check out Mastodon. We have our very own server as well. Before I get to the list of names that will be scrolling on my right, I would also want to say if you are a Chevrolet Vault technician and you would like to help us get Michael's Vault back on the road, please let us know. We are, we think we have, thanks to some amazing people who have commented, we have some amazing leads on potential problems and it looks like if we can find somewhere where we can drop the, the pack and someone is willing to help us bleed the system who is trained in that process, I think we'll be able to get this car fixed for relatively small amounts of money. It's actually behaving itself right now. I've, I've attached a, an ODB2 on board, OBD2. I see I did it. I've attached an OBD2 reader to it and I've reflashed it and everything seems fine now. I've done it twice and the second time it seemed to work. Um, but I'm not going to say that it's completely fixed. And I think we just need to drop that battery pack down, make sure that we check all of the connections because a lot of you think it's a loose connection and get it back on the road. We can't, as a channel, afford a huge amount of money to fix it for Michael and Michael, as a person, cannot afford a six or $8,000 or $10,000 repair bill, which is what it would look like if we took it to a specialist to fix. Anyway, scrolling on my right is a list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. They are Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Irish, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mora Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazza in the Gong, Dan Bear, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C., Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Centaur, and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world thanks to our top tier supporters. They are Robert Flannery, CPU Freak 101, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. We will be back soon, hopefully with a happier update to this particular problem. But until next time, keep evolving. So I know a lot of you watching this video do not know about the Honda Insight. So I'm, instead of giving you a, a classic Mac piece of trivia, I'm giving you this. This is a Honda Insight with an EV1 motor. You can see right there, it says General Motors on it. It was donated to the channel uh, by the wonderful Otmar Embenhook. And um, it has been partially converted to electric so it needs a it needs a controller it needs a battery pack and one of the things we want to do at the channel is to work with some other partners to get it back on the road and get it running unfortunately doing so takes a lot of the time and money and in order to earn the money we need to get this on the road we need to have more patreon supporters we need to have more sponsors we need to bring in more money transport evolved financially didn't do great last year so um, we just cannot afford to work on this right now and it, it's very frustrating, but I would love to get this on the road and do some fun, cool stuff with it, maybe work with a local community college, something like that, and help people learn how EVs work. But that is the goal. I'm worried that we're going to have to just give it on to someone else in the area. We've got a couple of potentially interested people because I just haven't had the time and the energy to do it. I've had some health problems over the last couple of years, but maybe you can help. Reach out. I'd love to talk.